piece of scripture, but I want to preface it with this. I was at uh, Best Buy the other day chatting with one of the uh, attendant guys that help out with tech stuff. And uh, yeah, I just, I like connecting with people and just asking questions and getting to know them a little bit. And I noticed he had a tattoo and uh, I asked him what it was and what it was significant for. And it was uh, a spade of some sort. And he talked about its origin and why he put it on and whatever. And then uh, I found this piece of scripture. It's part of a, part of a verse in uh, Isaiah. And I thought to myself, tattooing, it's a big deal uh, today. Um, and I thought, well, there would be ever anything that I would want tattooed on my body. Uh, Isaiah says here, Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. And uh, I thought, wow, um, that would be pretty significant being uh, asked the question, what, what's that all about? So, but uh, anyway, Lord, I thank you for the time together this morning. I thank you for that which we're looking at this today. And I'd ask that you would empower and strengthen my frame and my voice and uh, that you would speak and I would get out of the way. And the hearts that have been tendered, that may have been softened and prepared for this moment, that they would receive what you desire to have them receive through your spirit. Thanks for the honor of serving in your name. Amen. We're walking through the book of Acts, and Acts is a long book, and it's all about the, the start and the genesis and the growth and the expansion of something called church. It's not a building. It's a group of people, one at a time, that come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. And so, as a point of a quick little review here, uh, inside a fluid moment in time, I mean, this thing was, was just reacting. Uh, it was just something taking place and happening. Uh, the, 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 the Jerusalem as a city was overwhelmed with thousands upon thousands who were coming from as far as 800 miles away in any direction to celebrate an annual feast. It was just a, just a standard holiday. It's called Pentecost or Shabbat. And it was just, just another special, but another... Just another Thanksgiving, if you will. Okay? And then a spontaneous spirit-led reaction took place to a, to a wonderful pinch-me kind of moment. A pinch-me. This can't be happening. Uh, it took place during this holiday, this holy day. And it was unquestionably, it was unquestionably overwhelming to those with feet of clay. I mean, there were thousands of people all over and they call wind literally wind of this event taking place and from what was spontaneous we have this what we have coming out of this watershed moment and what I mean by that is history altering paradigm shifting moment in history uh, we have five and there are those who are commentators who would say four but I think there are five core, core, which means base or requisite exercises, and I'm getting, I'm using every one of these terms on purpose, uh, exercises. None of the five things are passive, but they require expending much energy. Five core exercises that we are highlighting uh, that became the template for the birth and the spread of the church. We're doing it all inside one paragraph. We're sitting on one paragraph of Scripture. And this is it. Verses 42 through 47 of chapter 2. It says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and, and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. They already 
They had already had 3,000 people come to know Christ as their Lord and Savior. Overwhelming. And then day by day, this is taking place as many of those thousands of people were staying in Jerusalem and needing what was being distributed and put forward here in this, in this passage. I believe personally that the most pivotal, the most critical word in this paragraph is devoted. Devoted. It is the word that is used most often in the majority of translations. The word devoted. Uh, words like dedicated, dutiful, persistent, staunch, committed, uh, fervent, ardent, faithful. They are synonyms of this word devoted. The first, first core exercise that we have noted by Luke is a devotion. A devotion to the commitment to Scripture, which I tagged last week as the truth. The truth. The Bible says of itself, it says that all Scripture is God-breathed. All Scripture is God-breathed. 2 Timothy 3.16. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? All. Each and every syllable, every jot and tittle. This devotion is at the center. It is at the center of the core exercises that are being employed. It is, if you will, this particular one is, it is the trunk. It is the trunk uh, that roots and holds and from which all the other majestic branches or exercises sprout and draw nourishment from. It is to be held close, and it is to be brought into your tent of meeting every day. The Word of God. The Word of God. Commitment to Scripture. Um, there, was, there was a teachable spirit that these people shared, being taught by the Lord's anointed, uh, the, the apostles. Now, their teaching... Uh, undoubtedly was in part, it was in part, reworking the grid. Reworking the grid of what they had already been taught in the written scriptures, which would be our Old Testament. The Torah, if you will. The law. Many of these, again, these folks that were here in Jerusalem at this moment, they were very devout. They came for this holiday, this holy day. They traveled hundreds of miles. They were, were God-fearing people. They recognized uh, Elohim. Uh, and, and, but they, they, they had this, they were brought up in a certain fashion, and they're being re, uh, uh, they're being, the, the, word, it, the word's being reworked, understood afresh. They're, they're teaching also, also included the words and deeds of Jesus Christ himself. This required, this required on their parts a confidence and a trust in the men called to oversee their spiritual development. The Bible says, the Bible says of the called elders among you, quote, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not domineering, being examples to the flock, and it says, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor. A heavy responsibility. One of which they are held accountable uh, for. If scripture, if scripture is the truth, I'm tagging the second core exercise we are compelled to be devoted to, a commitment to fellowship. A commitment to fellowship, and I'm tagging it as the tether or the tie. Uh, the adhesive, the adhesive for the commitment uh, to fellowship being experienced by the early church was their commitment to Scripture. I think, uh, I trust that we'd all agree with that. For those of you who grew up attending a church, a building that had a fellowship hall, I'm one of them, how about you? Anybody else? But look how many people we have had a fellowship hall. Well, for you guys and for me, 
you may have some extra homework uh, to attend to here because note fellowship is not it is not a room inside a building it's not a room inside the building any more than this building is a church this building is a meeting place you and I as individual believers in Christ our church our church here are some snapshots of fellowship I'm gonna throw out two or three of them fellowship as the Lord intended it, banishes the demons of strife and envy and slander and self-centeredness and replaces those cancerous cells with sacrifice and encouragement and selflessness. This fellowship cannot happen. It cannot happen without the graces of love and unity of heart and zeal being evidenced fellowship cannot happen where there is an unsettled anxiety over another season of debate at every church meeting a fellowship is a spirit endowed accomplishment and owes no credit to the will of man fellowship comes from the Greek word koinonia and what that means, it means, quote, to share in common. To share in common. It's doing life together. And, and look at our passage. It's filled with, with uh, pieces of, of, of fellowship. Verse 42, the breaking of bread had all things in common. Verse 44, verse 45, were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any, as any had need. Verse 46, breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts. Three times you, you have inferences of being around the table. Being around the table. Sharing a meal. A uh, few things melt away anger or grudges or bitterness uh, better than spending time eating and drinking uh, chatting and laughing and sharing experiences with others around the table it's so 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 important so good in 2019 Calvary Church has made opportunity to do so 19 times that's formally speaking here's the question when's the last time that you've had someone over or have been invited to catch lunch or dinner with others. That's fellowship. Uh, this life together is, it is fastened. It is, it is fastened by the, the cord, the cord of Jesus' love for us. Jesus taught that love for God and neighbor is the sum, it's the total of, of, all, of all the commandments. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's the sum. Uh, uh, Paul, Paul said that without love, we are nothing. We gain nothing, 1 Corinthians 13. James speaks of love in the highest terms when he calls it the royal law. James 2. And John, John reminds us that loving others is an assurance that we have been born of God and know God. 1 John 4. Truth is, here, truth is, there, a lot of people can do life together uh, through their sheer affinity that they might share with in one way or another. You, here are some examples. Sports teams. You know, there's a camaraderie there. There's doing life together there. You have frats and sororities. Those people do life together. They hang together. Uh, they, 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 you know, regular patrons at restaurants or bars. Think cheers. Uh, th 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 they're doing life together. They're talking, chatting, connecting. You have social clubs, the Rotary and Lions and Kiwanis. You have military units. You have the, the fraternal order of police. You have men and women in blue. They're doing life together. But 
But the shared life, the fellowship, the koinonia, Christ followers share is, is unique. Uh, it's special. Or at least, at least it is meant to be unique. Uh, you see, Jesus told the twelve, and here's the, get the context here. Uh, in the closing moments of his life, he, he told the twelve that the world would know that they were his disciples by their love for one another. He said, a new commandment. A new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. There's something that's to be deemed tangibly different with us. Versus all the other groups I just noted. Selfless, bold, humble, giving, serving, courageous, strong, dying to self. Christ-like love is to be the signature of those who claim to be members of Big C, Church Universal, and, and lived out in the local collective that we specifically label Calvary Bible Church. Koinonia, fellowship, is grounded within the relationship and the character seen in Scripture between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, one of our cherished hymns is entitled, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, by John Fawcett. Here's the first stanza. I'll spare you the singing of it. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like that to that above. To that above. It emulates, it, 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 it identifies, it connects with this, the Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, the word picture that, that I have given to fellowship, the tag if you will, is not a room, but that which tethers or ties brothers and sisters in Christ together. Uh, I, I think leather straps or, or a rope or cords that tie, a tie that binds. I thought of, as I was going through this this morning, I thought of guys doing mountain climbing who are tethered to one another with a rope. Think that, but this, war, this word picture comes with a caution or a warning. Outside in the elements of life, there is a risk of drying out, of becoming brittle, of cracking. And the question, what sustains the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love are all the core exercises. And it starts with a fellowship of kindred minds, lovers of the word that infects our love for one another. Love for the word which impacts our love for one another. Love for the word of God, knowing the word of God, drinking in the word of God, allowing it to saturate your being, affects your love for one another. From God's all-inspired word, we have this reminder of how important this is. Galatians 5, 14 and 15. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 15. But, but, if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. 
when church fellowship is not a Christianese cliche or a room designated with such a title, but a joyful, active, and I am going to use the word on purpose, fun, fun reality. If that's what it is, when those who are called brother or sister in Christ are really that, they can anticipate rich blessings. Churches need to be more loving internally if we ever expect to have an, an impact externally. Benefits to loving and caring, doing life like this, are literally life transforming. It fuels our worship, our praise to God. Uh, it, it, when that happens, It, and it bleeds into who we are in the day to day. We will not have people coming up to us and accusing us of playing the game on Sunday mornings in a place like this, while at the same time during the rest of the week being anything but Christ centered. It's not about me, but rather He to whom all praise is due. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Uh, it aids our prayers and supplications with a freshness that breeds a culture of tender intimacy with our Lord that enlivens and brings depth to our contact points with other Christ followers as well as those that we engage with wherever the Lord takes us. You'll come alongside somebody that you're, you're, you're connecting with. Could be at Best Buy. And you're just, you're making a connection there. You're trying to remember the name. So that if you go back there, you'll track and see how, in my case, how Joseph's doing. And say, hey man, remember me? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, but, you know. <laughs> Actually, people, for some reason, Jill says, people always remember you, Dean. <laughs> uh, if, if we have been moved to respond to the grace of God, and repented of our sin. I want to pass on for you, for me, some priceless reminders. We need to be reminded at times. That's why we're told during the time of communion, do this in remembrance of me, because we need to be reminded. Reminders that we share in common. They bond us in Christ to one another. Our God-breathed scripture says, I'm grabbing this from Romans 1, but this is something that Paul repeats often in much of his salutations to the letters he writes. But in this case, Romans, he says this, excuse me, to all those uh, in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's reminder number one, brother, sister. Here's reminder number one. You need to know this. I need to be reminded. We are loved by God. We are loved. By the Creator, God. Wow. God has chosen us. God has found delight in us and transformed us into new creatures. The old is gone and the new has come. God has joined Himself to us in Christ. A relationship intended to be closer, more intimate than that between a husband and wife. We're no longer instruments of unrighteousness, but rather, we're deemed friends. Friends of God. We need that reminder. Connection to fellowship. Well, here it is. If God loves me, and he loves you, there is a common ground for us to meet and to share in koinonia, or share in common. If you and I have not learned to know our brother or sister, uh, if they are yet strangers to us, and if because of this no love has sprung up in our hearts for them, something is amiss. We who are loved by God 
will love all others who are loved by God. And if God has placed us within the same circle of, of his affection, which the organism which we have here called Calvary Bible Church, may we not safely, may we not, this is a question, may we not safely grab the hand of one another in fellowship, a union that will last into eternity? And if, if we are one in Christ's love, we, we may have to say goodbye to one another here on earth for a time. But it's only for a season. These, th those, those bonds of which the love of Christ is the raw material, they are everlasting. Another stanza from the hymn. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain. But we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. We are loved by God. I need that reminder, so do you. We. Reminder number two, we are called, get this, we are called saints. <laughs> Who? <laughs> saints. The believers in Rome and all believers in Christ. We are called saints. Paul repeats that repeatedly in many of his, his epistles, his letters. Well, and it's not because they were saints. But because they became saints through the call of God. A saint, a saint is one who is set apart to God. Consecrated to God. Sanctified and separated. One who is in the world, but what friends? Not of the world. Now, one who belongs to God and lives for God. A saint is one who is being made holy by God. Being made perfect forever, those who are being made holy, Hebrews 10. And this holiness is a more spiritual, a more intense, a more divine, a, a, and a more heavenly thing than simply being more moral, more ethical, Far more than that. Connection to fellowship. Well, here it is. We who have been loved by God, we share equally in a call by God. A call for the same purpose that we become the same thing, namely, saints to God. Reminder number three. We have, we, we all have we all have the same Father. We all have the same Father. Somewhere recently, I, I think I read it somewhere. I read a story about two men who had no idea, no idea that they were related until they found themselves at a funeral for an extended relative. They, the, 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 the awareness and the shock was stunning. They said, well, what are you doing here? And the other one said, well, what are you doing here? Lo and behold, they were related. They had the same father. Connection to fellowship. Here it is. All those who have been loved by God and called to be saints... We share the same Father. And many of us, we don't realize it. And or act like it. We are... God, we, are, we, are we are blood. All of, we're blood. Bought by, bought by His blood at Calvary but perhaps we don't know it or are willing to admit it because we do not quite agree on some form of doctrine or some particular path being taken in local ministry this week walking through this passage and this theme 
came and I, I came to the opening part of Paul's letters to the Corinthian believers. He refers to them also as saints. Believers in Corinth were unbelievably inconsistent. But this is what Paul writes. I shared this with uh, someone from Calvary this past week we met. Because I, I it was fresh. I was just sharing with, with, with him. <laughs> to, the, to the church of God that is in Corinth. This is Paul's opening phrase. He's right. To those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together. With all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. And he goes on, goes on a little bit. Little. And inside that, that first chapter, just a few verses down the row, he, then he says this, moved by the Spirit to pen the continuation of God's Word here. He says, I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me that there is quarreling among you. My brothers... question that has to be asked. Do we not have one Father? One Lord? Did not the same blood that flowed for the Apostle Paul here in Romans or Luke, who's the writer of Acts, not flow for us? Was not the cry, it is finished, for them as well as for each of us who have received the gift of adoption? If so, then let us have fellowship. Let us share life in common. Rich, true, powerful koinonia with one another. Don't you want to see this? I do. And it is through that which will be a measurable difference because of he who is in us, working through us, from all the other places that, quote, have gatherings and do life together. Our fellowship must penetrate cultural, racial, gender, socioeconomic, and generational, generational, barriers. If the fatherhood of God is a reality among the children of God, then let our brotherhood be real and be sincere. The simple chorus. God, here's another chorus. Now this is probably not on the hymnal, but it's one I, I remember, and so do you. They will know that we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. Magnificently simple. Those phrases, that, that chorus, and yet profound. Last reminder, number four. We all have the same hope, do we not? It's heaven. Heaven. As believers in Christ, we are pushing uh, one way, we're pushing our way against the stream of our culture. Our, our world. We are going in exactly the opposite direction to the rest of mankind. That's part of what it means to be called and, and whatnot. Some of us have a harder time doing this than others on occasion. The legs get knocked out and the current sweeps you up. But here it is. Here's the joy of being connected. As one loved by God and called to be saints, you will not stop. You keep going. You have made up your mind to pursue holiness and press on toward the, go the, the, go the goal of the upward call of God. Philippians 3. What's the connection to fellowship? Here it is. When fatigue sets in, when you stumble and you start, you get swept backwards in your journey up the stream, against the stream. A hand. Here's the fellowship. A hand 
a hand arrives saying, Hang on! Hang on! Grab my hand. I will pull. I will pull you through this stretch of the water. I'll walk with you through this. I'll hang on to you. Because we're what? Encouragement of another heaven-bound saint is so valuable. And that's fellowship. Here's a question. Last question I'll ask. What must we do, Calvary, to have fellowship as has been direct have been described today? What must we do? I believe that we desperately need to come together with contrite and humble hearts and seek his face. Two more stanzas from the hymn. Before our Father's throne, we pour our ardent prayers. Our fears, our hopes, our aims are one. Our comforts and our cares. We share each other's woes. Our mutual burdens bear. And often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. We have put on the calendar, uh, and we don't do this often, we've done it a few times. We're putting on the calendar a week from today, in the evening at six o'clock, a moment of prayer. Come together here in this place to pray in huddles. To pray as a group, we have to have music as a part of that presentation, that time together, because we need it. Calvary, we need it. Philippians two verses one through four. Paul, Paul's prayer and plea is this. Here's the holy word of God again. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from Love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be in this place. I thank you for every soul here. By divine appointment, they're here, not by accident. There's been a nugget of some, something that has, been, that has penetrated the heart and the mind. It may have already preceded the message itself. The, a lyric from a song. Prayerfully, it's been something that comes out of the, the written record we have of one of the most important components of church. Being one who fellowships with others in rich, replicating love, your love, with each other. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the opportunity. In your name, amen. A couple things before I dismiss you. One is a statement, and one is a recommendation that I have available. Um, here's, here's just a word of... The stronger, the stronger your vertical relationship is, the stronger your horizontal fellowship will be. Believe that. Believe that. Okay? Let me have you stand, and then I'll make this recommendation if I, if I, if I could. Uh, I have a piece on a little table out here. We often will have articles that I've read or things that I thought would be encouraging or helpful or whatever.
And I have one out there called Why the Christian Life is a Call to Community. And it's just a two-page piece. I've read it, so I've marked it up. Sorry, but uh, love to have you take a peek at it, grab it. There's a few copies probably left out there. Uh, Operation Christmas Child, boxes, and uh, a week from tonight, prayer time. Um, what else? Oh, um, I would encourage you to uh, continue to pray for each other and uh, for Calvary. So let me pray. Lord, I thank you for the time together this morning in this place. I thank you for every soul that's been, that's been here, and both first hour as well as this. And for those that uh, seek to um, lead people into the throne room, and then uh, we sit under, uh, Lord, the, the word, and we pray that we might be molded and shaped well, and uh, that you would tether us together, tether us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us saints. Thank you for reminding us that we have one Father and that our ultimate destiny one day will be glory. Thank you. Look forward to that. In the meantime, may we enjoy each other's company and may it be so stellar that people are going to go, wow, glory, neat, wow, super. And uh, who knows what might happen. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you in your name. Amen.